Are you looking for groundwork ideas to work on with your yearling to prepare them to be started next spring? Stick around, I'll show you what I've been working on with my 18 month old gelding to prepare him to be started as a two year old. This is Bonnie Six Shooter, and if you guys remember the last time I posted a video of him, I was loading him on the trailer to take him to the vet and have him castrated. And since being castrated early in the spring, we haven't done a whole lot together. I've ponied him a few times to help bring the swelling down in his sheath area, and he's had his feet trimmed, he's had a few baths, and he's mostly just been allowed to grow up and be a horse. So. I'm going to start today off by touching and petting him all over, you know, readdress all the things that I know I can do with him already, petting and rubbing on him, picking up all these feet. Um, if you remember correctly before, he was not really allowing me to pick up his feet all that well, so he's come a long way in about the last six months. I can't say that I practiced this a whole lot. All this improvement in disposition is primarily attributed to being castrated. Everything got a whole lot better once he was castrated. So I can attest to you that if you are on the fence about castrating your stud colt and he is an ornery little turd, let me tell you, that is the way to go. It will improve their disposition drastically. So here I am working on teaching him how to move out of my space and asking him to move this shoulder over for me. I want him to just take one step over and cross over. And one thing that he's doing here is he's taking a step forward. He's not just crossing straight over, he's going forward with that step. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a step back with him and ask him to move back before I ask him to move over again. And I immediately back out of his space as soon as I get that one step. I just want one step at a time. I'm just trying to get one step. I, I want to have full control of those feet because it's the footwork that counts here. I pet and rub on him vigorously. Every time he does exactly what is expected of him, I try to release the pressure. Now, I want him to cross over in front. I don't want him to take that step behind. Reason is, is because I, I want him to follow through on that front end. I want him to move those shoulders out of the way just like that. Instead of, if he, if he rocks it backwards onto his hind, it's gonna make the turn incorrect once I'm up in the saddle, and I'll save that explanation for another video when I'm on the horse as well, or on another horse. He's stepping away again, and he's taking a step forward rather than across. So I'm gonna go ahead and back him up again. And with this particular guy, I have to keep the session's really short. I have to keep the requ requests really small and not push too hard because he does get frustrated with me really easy and he gets mad and upset pretty quick. So I try to keep the requests really mild. I don't put a whole lot of pressure on him. I make sure I rub and pet on him a lot. This is something that he genuinely really doesn't care for. He doesn't like the front of his forehead to be pet on that much. So. I kind of do it within reason. See how he's raised his head. It's not his favorite thing in the whole world. Um, I go ahead and hug on him, and this is going to help me in the future as well because once I get up on his back, he's going to have to be able to accept being loved and hugged on and feel that pressure around his neck. He's got a leg cocked. He's told me he's okay with it. I'm going to go ahead and grab the rest of my equipment, and I'm going to prepare him to put a saddle pad and sur single on him. I really like how Shooter wanted to follow me over to the rail to grab all of my equipment, but he's not so sure he wants to come back over to the center with me. Maybe he was thinking we were done for the day. I don't know, but I bring all my equipment in and he decides he's just going to leave. He's done. So I'm going to make the bad stuff hard and the good stuff easy. I'm going to go ahead and send him around on the rail just a little bit. And he kind of gets to screwing off and playing a little bit. And that's evident in him cross-firing around and flagging his tail like he is. He kind of cocks his head a little weird. You know, he's just playing and, and kind of goofing off. Not really taking seriously what we're going to work on next. So I go ahead and send him. Now the Pivo ended up losing us. So I had to go let it find us again and correct it. And by that time he was done playing and screwing around. And he wanted to meet me up in the center and get serious about this lesson plan again. 
So I go ahead and connect him up with the lunge line. And I'm gonna start by introducing him to the saddle pad. And I'm gonna just show it to him and I'm gonna throw it on the ground in front of him. And now the reason for this is, is because you never know when the saddle pad may go flying off their back. We have a lot of wind here in South Dakota and I can put the saddle pad on and it'll go flying off before I even get there with the saddle. I even showed that in a video before when it happens. And all horses buck, all horses bite, all horses kick, all horses run off, all horses strike. You never know how they're gonna react to something new and they may aggressively go at a saddle pad like this and I don't wanna be the one holding it if they decide they aggressively wanna go after it because they're scared of it. Because just like right there, I'm in a vulnerable position, I'm bent over in front of him and he could easily go to stomping and striking if it was something that scared him. So I don't know if you guys recall, but one of the last times that I worked with him, he was running off and having nothing to do with me throwing up a saddle pad or a sur single on his back. So he's come a long way and I just start by, you know, holding him in place and swinging that pad up on him. And when you see him kind of want to step forward on me, I want to try to stop him because that turns into running off ahead of me. And they usually tend to lean their shoulders into me because they're trying to get that side of their body away from me. That's why it's so important to have that foot control in the very beginning. Now I'm gonna go back and forth. On some horses, I can just stay on one side and just keep on throwing that saddle pad up and down, up and down. On other horses, I have to go back and forth. This is the kind of horse that I wanna go back and forth on, showing him this thing that it's no big deal. And the release is when I take it off. So I don't ever want to take this saddle pad off of him while he's moving, okay? And, I mean, ideally, I don't want it to fall off of him either while he's moving. I mean, sure, it happens if they go running off and, and then the saddle pad goes flying off of them. That does happen, and it's something that has to be fixed because they relieve themselves of whatever's scaring them. But ideally, I want to remove the pad, remove the sur single while they're standing still. So now that he's accepted the saddle pad, I'm gonna go to putting the sur single on him. Now this is just a really lightweight, cheap, synthetic nylon sur single, nothing special. If he destroys it, it's no big deal, it's not super expensive. When he decides to walk away, I try to make his feet move in a different direction. I don't want him to walk past me, push past me, take steps forward while I'm putting this on. There's just too many opportunities for them to kick out, run you over, shoulder you, whatever, when they do something like that. I need them to have their feet still. I don't want them to move their feet. In the event that he gets to where he's moving his feet too much, I would go ahead and send him out on the rail, and remove all the equipment off of him and send him out on the rail. But I'm going to pet on him a lot. I'm going to go back and forth with him. And he accepts all of this. And he's really good about all of it. You know, I really couldn't ask for him to have a better session with having the saddle pad put on and the sur single put on like this. You gotta remember guys, this, this colt is only 18 months old. There really is no weight to it. I'm not hurting him. I'm just desensitizing him to stuff that I'm gonna do with him in the next six months, okay? I'll be starting him next late spring, early summer. So I'm gonna go ahead and cinch it up just tight enough that it stays in position not tight enough that I'm gonna cut him in two. I just want him to get comfortable and get used to it and I'm gonna pet and rub on him. And you guys, you know what? I'm gonna, I hate to do this with to you, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video short with this. Uh, stay tuned for part two of this first uh, session of groundwork with an 18 month old colt. I sure appreciate you watching and don't hesitate to put any comments or questions in the comment section below. Thanks for spending your time with me and thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't already, hit the button down below so you can be notified every time I upload a video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.